Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. Welcome to In the Field and thanks for joining me today. If this is the first time you're checking out my channel, thanks for giving me a shot. Hope you like what you see and maybe you'll come back, watch another video or hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. That would be appreciated. Now today I'm going to take you out to Bandon, Oregon. The town is nice and quiet in the wintertime. Uh, I was there a little more than a week ago as I record this, uh, finishing up a workshop. And before the workshop began, I did some scouting around town in the morning and had a really, really nice sunrise and uh, just shot a nice, calm, quiet area near some, uh, some old pilings. Let me get you out there and uh, share some of this location with you. I'm up on Coquel Point this morning and over the town of Bandon is a beautiful set of clouds. They're already starting to get some morning color. However, over the beaches, it's incredibly dark. The sky is empty, and that's going to be a less interesting photo. So I'm going to head into town and see about getting some of this wonderful morning light as part of, of my frame. Just a matter of finding a good subject. I found my pilings, and sure enough, there's some really nice light kind of behind me as I rotate around here. You'll see that that sunrise is starting to take shape. I just need to find myself a good set of these pilings to work with so that I can have a good amount of color, but some decent separation. This is, a, this is an exercise in bringing some order to chaos with, uh, with these pilings, finding a good grouping of them, maybe something triangular to lead into a scene. A little time for scouting before I lose all of the color here. Uh, it's, it's coming on fast, which is good, but that means I gotta get to work. I'm working out test compositions. I think this one needs to be tweaked a little bit, pan to the right, just to shave off some of what's out of the edge there. The colors coming through the video camera are actually even warmer than what I'm getting from the raw. So there's a nice color, some nice texture up in that sky. And uh, I'm balancing back and forth between, you know, what set of pilings to include. There is uh, some buildings and, you know, some, you know, a couple of points of artificial light across the harbor. I'm trying to keep that out of the frame. I really just want this to be, you know, a little more, uh, a little more peaceful, a little more natural, uh, just, uh, just the sticks in the water. Well, things are shaping up really nicely now. It's a nice, nice glow of color up in the sky. I can see behind me there. I don't need any filters right now. Without filters, F11, um, at, at ISO 400, I'm coming in in the neighborhood of 20 second exposures. So, uh, it, Everything on the water gets nice and smooth and clean, and that's looking really pretty. It's a matter of, you know, kind of balancing. You can see some of the buildings behind me with, uh, with their lights as, you know, they're starting to begin their day. I don't want that in my frame, and it's kind of a bummer. That's where a lot of the color is right now. But out to, I guess we'll be facing to the north, you can see the mix, right? You know, on the one side, you've got the warmer tones, and on the other side, you've got the cooler tones, and that'll shift as the sun comes up. So I'm trying to frame something up that minimizes those lights. If I pan like right about there, you get the idea. And then it's finding a set of pilings that create a good shape. Starting to get those hints of color. <laughs> hints, well, more than hints of color. I say hints because on the back of my still camera, the colors are much more muted than what I'm seeing through video. It's kind of a, an interesting little sidebar on the differences between how sensors, cameras, and modes decide to pick up color. I mean, the sky is on fire in this video camera, but if I get close to, let's see, I'm framed up kind of like about something like this in the still camera. If I get close enough, we should be able to re-meter and see that, uh, you know, the colors are a lot duller in the, the full frame still camera, but we can see there is there is some nice stuff out there. So this will be a this will be a wonderful morning. Just waiting a little bit longer for that sun to creep across here and and fill in this part of the sky with some nice warm morning light. This has gotten bright enough out here now. I am going to put the filter 
up on the camera. I'm not needing it yet. I'm still getting a three to four second drag. I've dropped back down to ISO 100. I'm, I'm going back and forth between F8 and F11, mainly just playing games with exposure. I don't need the full depth. Uh, I don't care if the background is a bit soft. I just want to make sure that the, the pilings themselves are crisp. But as there'll be more light here, I want to make sure that I do get nice smoothness on the water. The wind starts to pick up a little bit at sunrise, you know, the change of warm air, cold air, you know, all that science stuff. Now the light's faded, something must have swallowed up the sun. And uh, color's gone from the sky. Yeah, time to pack it in. So as I look back at the footage from the shoot, as well as the photos that I captured, you know, a couple of things stand out. That difference between cameras and how they render color. My A6400, that's the camera I was using to do most of the video filming out there. It, it really showed incredibly rich colors. And that was true uh, to uh, very much to the Northeast. Now looking at the photos that I captured, Certainly the, the raws and the still camera, the full frame, colors were more subdued and those had to be coaxed out some. But um, more so, I guess, the, uh, the, the compositional challenges that I had, uh, where the color was in the sky was pointing more inland, and there was just more distracting things in the background that uh, were just taking away from the composition. And I could not, uh, I, I guess I couldn't take the camera away from that sky. I mean, that really was the thing that made that location unique on that day. So ended up with, uh, with a wider shot of some of the pilings. And it has less of that color just because of where I had to orient and position the camera. And there's a particular thing I did in the processing of this photo here that uh, with the sky to add a little bit of extra drag on it. By this time, I was taking about 15 second exposures and those clouds were quite uh, nuanced and rippled if you were to freeze the action, but that didn't look so good in the water. Uh, so, and I needed to, to smooth things out a little bit more in just the sky. So I'll show you later this week on in post the, the, the bit of tweaking I did in On One Photo Raw to make that, uh, that work out for me. So come back and check that out if you're interested in the processing side for this photo. And that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment below. Got questions about photography, drop them in the comments. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.